I have a friend and colleague who's done just three real estate deals, and each time he utilized the 1031 tax deferred exchange method. And in doing so, we went back and calculated, he has expanded the wealth and size of his portfolio by seven figures on just three deals. And today, I'm going to show you how we did it. Welcome back to Confident Real Estate. I'm your host, JC. As many of you know, I did a very comprehensive video on 1031 tax deferred exchanges a while back, a couple of months ago. And if you didn't see it, I'll leave the link down below. We covered all the different types of exchanges, the different rules, what you need to know, and why they are so incredibly beneficial for real estate investors. And I'm not surprised that a couple of months later, I'm still getting questions almost weekly about that video because it is a unbelievable tool that is exclusive to real estate investing. There is almost no other investment option I could think of where you can sell an asset for a big profit and not pay taxes, potentially forever defer your taxes on that sale, that you just keep all of the profits and roll them into your next investment. That is special to real estate and it's the 1031 exchange. So I figured the best way to illustrate just how unbelievably beneficial it is and how it can exponentially grow the value and size of your portfolio, I would show you a case study from a friend and colleague of mine who's done just three deals. He's not a very active investor, but he now makes five figures a month in cash flow from his investment properties and has increased his portfolio value by seven figures in just three deals because he used the 1031 tax deferred exchange method called the delayed exchange, which is the most common type of exchange. And if somehow you've never heard of a 1031 tax deferred exchange, then you really need to watch this video all the way to the end because it is going to blow your mind what an unbelievable tool this is that is exclusive to real estate investing. And when it's done, I highly recommend that you really do click on that video I'm gonna leave the link for down below that goes into a very comprehensive overview of how these exchanges work, the different types, the rules, like I said before, all the good stuff in detail. So let's get into today's case study to show you just how my friend made all that money in just three deals. But before we do, you know what I'm gonna ask you, hammer that like button for me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and joining our growing Confident Real Estate family. We'd love to have you. Before we get into the actual numbers and details of our case study example for this video, let's just do a quick refresher on what a 1031 exchange actually is. It's also known as a like-kind exchange because you're basically swapping an investment property for another like-kind investment property. But if you meet certain requirements under section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code, you get to pay little to no taxes. And it's important to understand that, that you are selling a property, recognizing a capital gains tax profit, but you are deferring those taxes and rolling them into your next property, meaning you are not paying the taxes when you sell property one, you are rolling all of that cash tax-free or tax-deferred into investment property number two, your like-kind exchange. And the beauty of that is it allows you to continue to grow and appreciate the equity that you put into your first deal for many deals in a row. There's no limit to how many times you can do a 1031 exchange. You can buy and sell one property and then another and another and another and another. And every time you are just rolling the equity that you put into your very first deal into each subsequent deal without paying any taxes on it. Eventually, if you sell a property and you just keep the cash, then at that point you will owe the capital gains taxes on that sale for the amount of equity value you have grown over the years. That's why it's a tax deferment, not a tax forgiveness. You get the difference. Eventually you will owe the taxes unless you continue to invest in real estate and just keep building up your portfolio value using the same initial down payment you put in property one over and over and over again 
through multiple 1031 exchanges. And we're gonna, if that confuses you, we're gonna clarify it in the example that we do here today. But if you take your portfolio and you pass it through a will to your heirs after you die, they will inherit your entire portfolio and start the clock over from scratch. They will not owe any of the capital gains taxes that you would have owed in your lifetime because now you're dead. They get to inherit the property and start from scratch. And that is one of the other big benefits of a 1031 exchange process because you're growing a portfolio and you might be able to take care of your children, your nieces, nephews, grandchildren by passing your portfolio on to them and they will never have to pay the capital gains taxes that you would have had to pay had you sold your property in your lifetime for cash instead of doing a like-kind exchange into another property. I hope that made sense, but it's gonna be a lot clearer when we do this case study, which we're about to get into in a minute. It is also important to note that no matter which type of 1031 exchange you do, because there are a number of different types, in this video, we're gonna cover the most common one, the delayed exchange, as part of our case study, but there are a number of diff different types of 1031 exchanges. The most important thing to note is that no matter which type you do, both properties, the one you're selling and the one you're buying as the like-kind exchange property must be within the United States. You cannot buy a foreign property to rent out on a beach in Curacao and think that you're gonna be able to do a tax deferred exchange. Uncle Sam is willing to give you the deferment so long as the money stays on US shores. Kind of makes sense. As I said before, for this case study, we're going to look at the most common type of 1031 exchange, which is the delayed exchange. And the first thing you need to do when you do any type of 1031 exchange is to find a qualified intermediary. And that's basically a person or company, because there are reputable companies that solely act as qualified intermediaries for the purpose of 1031 tax deferred exchanges. That's how common tax deferred exchanges are in the real estate world. There are actually companies that do just this and that's it. And they're called qualified intermediaries. And the purpose of them is that when you sell a property, the net proceeds have to go to the qualified intermediary. You, as the person who sold the property, can never touch or receive any of the money, not even a penny of it, into your account. If you do, it invalidates the entire tax deferred exchange and you instantly owe Uncle Sam 15 to 20% of your net profits in capital gains tax, and he will come and collect it. So you have to make sure you have a qualified intermediary set up before before you sell your original property. The qualified intermediary will take all of the proceeds that come into you, into their account instead of yours, and then when you have a replacement property, they will take that money out of their account and pay it to the person who's selling you the next property that you're doing the like-kind exchange with. Next comes timing. There's a 45-day rule and a 180-day rule. The minute your qualified intermediary receives the money into their account from the property you just sold, the 45-day timer starts. You have 45 days to identify up to three properties that you wanna buy. There's a form they make you fill out, it's very official, it has to be in writing, but you have 45 days to go find and identify three properties that you wanna buy. And then you have to go buy one of those properties within that totality of 180 days, and that's the 180 day rule. You have to close on at least one of those properties within 180 days of the time you sold your property. That's six months. Sounds short, but it's six months. So it's not 45 days and then another 180 days. It is 180 days total from the time you sell your property to the time you must buy a replacement property for your like-kind exchange in order to qualify for a tax deferment. And again, it has to be one of the three properties you identified within that initial 45-day period that you actually buy. You can buy more than one, but you gotta buy at least one of the three you identified. If you wanna buy two of the three you identified, go for it. Now, there is a rule through the IRS that allows you to buy more than, or identify more than three properties 
in that 45 day window. But I'm not going to get into that in this, in this video. If you want to learn more about that, you're going to have to watch my more comprehensive 1031 exchange video. And again, the link is down below. So about 15 years ago, one of my colleagues named Sam bought a single family investment property in a neighborhood that was starting to see a resurgence. He identified all the major factors that you're supposed to look for in a good neighborhood to invest in. It had proximity to transportation. It was pretty close to a lot of major employers in the area, close to highways. The local school system had actually just gotten a major contribution of tax dollars to upgrade and advance the school system. So he realized this was a good area to buy in for the long term. So he bought this single family home smartly just before it really picked up and everybody else caught on to all the wonderful factors that this neighborhood had. And then suddenly everybody started moving in, which drove the prices up. He paid $150,000. He was able to put the 20% down, which was $30,000. The property was in great shape and really didn't need any renovations. And he moved in a tenant in and started renting it pretty quickly. And over five years that he owned it, the value grew exponentially as the neighborhood really improved. Like I said, a lot of people started to realize all the factors that he realized by doing his due diligence. Because he never raised the rent on his tenant, other investors viewed it as an underperforming asset and felt that there was hidden value there. They wanted to do some upgrades and increase the rents, etc. And my colleague really felt it was time to cash out and upgrade. So he sold the property for $295,000, almost double what he had paid just five years earlier. When he closed on the property, he had to pay off his original mortgage which had a balance at the time of $104,894. He also had a 6% broker's commission, which was $17,700, which meant his qualified intermediary as part of his 1031 exchange received $172,406 at the closing, well more than the $150,000 purchase price he bought the house for just five years earlier. 45 days later, he had identified three properties and less than 180 days after that, he closed on a four family investment property for $875,000. It was the deal of a lifetime. It was in a prime location near everything a tenant could ask for, transportation, shopping, restaurants, etc. And each of the units was large. They each had three beds and two bathrooms. Basically, a friend of Sam's had inherited the property from his aunt and had no interest in keeping it. It was never even listed with a broker. It was also one of the reasons why Sam was so willing to really let go of his first investment property because he knew what a great deal this was. His friend said to him, I'm about to inherit a property. Do you have any interest in buying it? I know you already own an investment property. And Sam said, absolutely. So like property number one, Sam put 20% down, which was $175,000. So he had to come out of pocket a few thousand dollars because again, you remember after he sold the first property, he had collected $172,406 at the closing that went into his qualified intermediaries account. So he came out of pocket a few thousand dollars, but otherwise it didn't cost him any new money. The only reason he could even jump in on this deal was because he didn't have to pay the taxes on the initial $172,406 profit from the sale of property number one. By doing the 1031 exchange, he had deferred $34,481 that he would have owed in taxes had he not done the 1031 exchange on the sale of property one. So fast forward another eight years and Sam was making amazing monthly cash flow because he had raised the rents every year to be more in line with market rate rents. He learned his lesson after property number one, never to just let the rent stay as it was, to maximize the profit potential in his property. So he kept raising the rents year over year to stay in, in line with the market rate rents. The original tenants were paying well below the market rate to the prior owner because she was an elderly lady who had owned the property for 20 years and she really didn't want the headache of tenant turnover. Now, suddenly someone offered Sam $1.3 million, totally unsolicited. They loved that property. 
they couldn't believe that it had changed hands without them knowing and they wanted in for the long term. So they offered him $1.3 million and he decided, you know what? It's time to upgrade again and really build out his portfolio. So Sam sold the property and when it closed, he paid off his entire original mortgage, which had a balance of $560,388. And again, this was an unsolicited offer, so there was no broker involved, no broker commission to pay. So the qualified intermediary on this 1031 exchange received $739,612 at the closing. 45 days later, once again, Sam identified three more properties. And within 180 days after that, he closed on two of the investment properties, each with multiple apartments over retail stores in prime downtown locations. So now he had commercial properties that had a mix of residential and commercial tenants. One of the properties he purchased for $1.35 million, and one of them he purchased for a little over $1.115 million. Because these were now commercial properties, Sam actually had to put 30% down on each instead of the 20% that he could get away with with a traditional residential mortgage and property. So, doing a 1031 exchange, he deferred $147,922 tax $2 in taxes. Again, $147,922 in taxes that he would have owed to the IRS on the sale of property too. But because he was able to defer that money, it gave him the ability to buy not one, but two commercial properties. So now, 15 years later, Sam owns $4 million worth of investment real estate that pays him a monthly cash flow of five figures. And he has only come out of pocket about $35,000 total for down payments. He has saved over $182,000 in capital gains deferred taxes by using 1031 exchange methods. That is more than the cost of the initial single family house that he purchased for $150,000. That's, he saved more in taxes than that first property even cost him. Think about that. I think this case study also illustrates perfectly the power of capital appreciation that occurs in real estate investing. And it just requires that you do a little bit of due diligence and take the time to learn how investing works and how real estate works. And you can go out and do the same thing. There are a lot of ways to make a lot of money in real estate investing. Think about it. Had Sam not been able to utilize or didn't know how to utilize 1031 tax deferred exchanges for each of these three properties that he bought and sold, he would not have had the ability to buy one of the two commercial properties that he currently owns. The amount he saved, that over $182,000 in taxes that he saved by doing 1031 deferred exchanges allowed him to buy an entire other building that he would not have had the cash to buy otherwise. That was six extra tenants. Imagine that. He would have six less tenants paying him rent every single month had he not done this simple 1031 exchanges each time he sold a property. Are you convinced yet on the power of 1031 tax deferred exchanges? As always, I really appreciate that you made it all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please feed the YouTube algorithm and do so for me. If you haven't subscribed, really consider it because I think we give great quality content. And if you've had any interaction or dealings with 1031 exchanges in your past or you know someone who has, feel free to share the story about it in the comment section down below. It's how we all learn from each other by sharing our experiences and our stories with the things and topics that we cover here on this channel. As always, I appreciate it. Until next time.